Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 6th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough in that subject uh, heading to put radio show question, that would be great. And of course, Insider Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out here. You got the Dow down 20 points, the S&P up one, NASDAQ 100 up 102. Russell is flat. Semis are up 32 points. They're the leader in the clubhouse up nearly 2%. Uh, spot volatility next down four percent off a buck thirty. Uh, Goldilocks back twenty two bucks. Silver's up four pennies. Lights we crude is off a buck thirty three. Natural gas that oh natural gas is down sixteen pennies. That would be confirming a three drive to a top pattern. That that that's what it looks like to me. We can go check that out a little bit later. And you got treasury bonds that are now down uh, two full points out there. So we'll certainly take a look at that. The uh, first question was just uh, from in the side of the Tigers, and just simply so I don't forget, would be to take a look at the XLF out here. So let's take a look at the financial sector, see what it's communicating to you and I. First, what we can see out here. And I apologize, I, 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 don't, I didn't write down who had requested it, but inside the den. But uh, here's the first thing that we can see is that. Uh, we have got a nice little Gartley cell pattern. Let me get my crosshair out here. Now, the Gartley cell pattern was confirmed on the trading day of April 13th. So in a Gartley cell pattern, you've got an A to B equals CD that takes place to the upside. Let me see if I can actually draw that in without screwing up my shaded in pattern out here. So here you'll see the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD that completed. Now, not all A to B equals CD patterns complete with a one-to-one. -one. This one did. We know that it did because it created that bearish reversal candle. In this case here, the bear sash. And not until the high of uh, April 9th is taken out will this pattern have failed. Now, what, what sellers, when you get a topping pattern, a topping signal, the real only requirement, see, we don't never, we, we don't never my goodness gracious, we don't ever know whether or not when you get a topping signal, will the sellers be able to bust out support. If we get a bottoming signal, we don't ever know until it happens whether buyers are going to be able to bust out resistance. And that's why it's so important not just to be able to identify the patterns out here, but we must understand where support and resistance is. So whoever was asking me about the XLF, right now what it's done today, it's testing two levels of support, both the bottom of its profile which is about 2148 or right, yeah, right on 2148, as well as Stevie's red line. So if you see it close below these levels, two important areas of support will have fallen and price should move lower. Now, in the case of the XLF on a daily time frame, we below these areas, there is no additional support. Not that we can't find some support, but on a daily time frame, there's no breakout support. So the XLF would be one of the sectors that would be telling you it's ready to go down to the March lows. Is it there today? 
or right now, I should say, at 110? The answer is no. Price has just pushed its way back to support. That's what's going on when we take a look at the daily time frame for the XLF. Now, one other thing that I can do for you is pull over the market breadth for the financial sector. So if you're short the financial sector, trying to understand, you know, will the XLF uh, go ahead and push lower? Well, if we look at the weekly time frame, that's what we're looking at right now. We can see that only six instruments with inside the XLF, I don't know how many instruments make up the XLF, but only six instruments are trading above the top of the profile. That would be bullish. Whereas we have 13 trading below the bottom of the profile, and we have 43 that are trading inside the center. I guess we could add all those up and figure out how many constituents are in there. It's somewhere around 52, give or take one or two. But this is in bearish position. Now let's take a look at the daily time frame outer because the daily time frame will say, hey, guess what? On the daily time frame, the XLF right now may have a tough time busting through that support level that we just looked at. How can you say that, Steve-O? I know that's the question. The reason it's not me that's saying it, I am just being a narrator today. So when I do this show between one and two, for the most part, I go off script every now and then. You know that. It doesn't take much to get me off script. But here, all I'm doing is narrating for you what the charts are telling us, right? We want to understand whether top or bottom signals, first thing. Second, where's support and resistance? Third, if we can, what's the market breadth look like? Well, we saw that price was pushing its way down to support inside the XLF, bottom of its daily profile. Stevie's red line out there. But here's what we also know. Nine instruments are trading above the, oh, what? what? This can't be right. This 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 can't be right. It didn't update. Oh, oh man, what did I do there? Well, that's a bummer. Oh, I know how to probably fix this. Let me go back to the weekly. So that's clear. So this is interesting. So this is showing right now nine instruments trading above the top of the profile and 17 below. But I don't show a bearish crossover here. So everything happens for us, right? Man, I don't know why this is happening for us here, but if I'm going to assume that the lines on the chart are correct and that the date over on the left hand side, I don't know why I'm going to assume that, but I'm just am at this stage here. If this is the if this is in fact the case with um, that, this would be telling us that it would be difficult for the XLF to bust through support. We've got the uh, four hour time frame. We see how this looks here. Now this looks uh, more accurate with regard to only ten instruments for a four hour basis above the top of their profiles and 43 below and on the 60-minute uh, time frame, also in a bearish position. So I'd watch the support level inside XLF. It's giving you the bearish signals out there. The question is, will it be able to bust through support today? So I hope that that uh, helps you out, whoever had uh, asked out there. Now, I don't want the questions to get out in front of me. Uh, so let's go to the next question that came in here. And uh, this is from Tim R., Tim in Massachusetts. Tim says, do you still think that the broad market is headed lower in the near future, as you were talking about with Tom O'Brien on Monday. Thank you, Tim in Massachusetts. So let's not, let's not, uh, let's not, uh, Tim, let's not use the I think, what I think. Instead, let me just present to you the information and then you make a determination about what you think out there. So let's do that. Um, we're going to do that actually when we get back from this breakout here. I see I've got about five seconds. So I'll, I'll get that set up for you, Tim. Here I'm going to give you the answer. All of the chart patterns that we're going to take a look at, all of the chart patterns that we're going to take a look at would answer that question and say yes. With one exception. One exception. And that would be the daily NQ futures contract. And that hasn't given the signal just yet. But otherwise, we come back from this break. Wait till you see what is in front of us. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up off 20. Uh, S&P is up uh, two points. So Tim asked a great question. And the question was, uh, do I think that the broad market is headed lower? And what I don't want to do is I, I don't want to give you my opinion. Again, I believe that I'm really just a narrator. We take a look at the chart. I just try to keep it simple. Where's support resistance? Is there a topping or bottoming pattern? Um, you know, where is price? Uh, where does price have a high probability of heading to based upon the patterns that are out there? So if we start from current slides. So what we're going to do here, Tim, is I'm just simply going to take you back to uh, the patterns that really are prevalent in the market right now. This goes back to 1935. It's a, called the Gartley 222. Uh, it's because it was on Gartley's book that was uh, actually uh, produced or, uh, in, in uh, 1935. In it. So on page 222, this is where the A to B equals CD pattern comes from. It's figure number B out here, and it's on the right-hand side. And what this shows is a nice big bull run, A to B in this case here, what it's showing, and it's A point and B point, different than our A to B equals CD that, that we're going to talk about. The actual A to B equals CD that we're going to talk about is the one where it starts with this little letter C out here. And and that's the A and B and then a retracement and then there's your C to D. And that's where what he's suggesting is that you want to sell every Gartley cell pattern. Sell every Gartley cell pattern. Oh, man, oh man. Yeah, I think the Corona's got to me here from yesterday. In any event, I, I, I used to not have a six pack. I had a six pack last night. But if we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here, again, it's coming from H.M. Gertley, and uh, this was coming back from his study of the what could be learned from the uh, 1929 uh, crash. 
as well as the uh, bear market that preceded. It wasn't, as Tom and I were talking about, it wasn't that first move down that really crushed everybody. Not that that didn't crush everybody, but it was the move that continued lower. So here's from another page inside of his uh, book, It's Profits in the Stock Market. You can, you can still find that typically on eBay or somewhere. You can find a used version of it. But here's the Gartley 222 pattern, if you will, using candlesticks and going all the way back uh, to the 1920 on bottom. Nice hammer, by the way, that forms so a weekly time frame out here. And there's your A to B equals CD pattern that was drawn in. So uh, this was confirmed with the bearish engulfing candle. So that's one thing we know. Uh, the Here, by the way, was the result of that. And so many people, I'm sure, coming off of that low of 195 bucks or so from back in 1929, as price got up into about the uh, two, almost 300 uh, level, thought that, oh, we were out of the woods. Turns out they weren't they, the woods. They were just entering the woods. And those woods here, Tim, didn't bottom until 1932. Now, without showing you any other pattern that was present in 1932, what fundamentally was taking place in 1930 because that's how we really bring it into where we're at today. If you're wondering why Charlie Munger and why Warren Buffett didn't take action, you're looking at it right here. Not just this chart, I guess. Now you're looking at it right here. Because what they also know, what you also know, is that when there was a bottom that formed in 1932, it was also coinciding with a low in GDP that year. And so you've got to ask yourself the question, is the GDP low in the first quarter, is that it? Is that it? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to have a lower GDP in the second quarter. So that does say in the second quarter here, second quarter being obviously April through June, there's a possibility we could see a bottom during that time period. There's a possibility. But is it this low that we saw back here in uh, March? Mm, I think the answer is no. The charts are saying that the answer is no. Remember, I want you to take a look at here. By the way, you can see the 2009 bottom, the 2002 bottom, the 1991 bottom. We go back and take a look at a lot of bottoms that are out there, which I always like to do, but we're, we're not going to do that. So so we're just going to use the, that, that, that information here, Tim, for you to answer the question now. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside the indices out here. Let's pull over the S&P 500. What do we know about it? Well, the S&P 500 has completed a Gartley sell pattern. It did it with the bear sash candle half a few days ago. Now, what it hasn't done, the S&P 500, what it hasn't done is it hasn't been able to bust through the first level of support. And that first level of support is Stevie's green line. See, this is a beautiful thing. It ain't a moving average. So you can't try to replicate it. I watch people try to replicate it all the time. It cannot be replicated. It can only be replicated by using the actual tool. And I've got a workshop that's on my uh, archive workshop that members have access to, and they can find out exactly how this is calculated. And I developed this tool because I wanted to understand when was a retracement just a retracement, or when was a counter trend rally, the opposite, uh, just a counter trend rally out here. In this case, we saw price come back, test and reject Stevie's green line. So here's one thing that you and I know. If we see a close blow Stevie's green line on the S&P 500, currently priced at 28.28, that's going to tell us about an ensuing further retracement. Now, what we have to do for the S&P, we'd have to go look at the ES Mini, understand where support is for its task market profiles. In lieu of that, though, we can say that price inside the S&P 500 would be trying to target 2574. And that is a level where price most recently broke out. That is another support area. And Tim, you just have to take this one step at a time because I cannot tell you what the future holds. We can look at historical patterns, see what they mean, apply them to today, Always take a look at new information, no matter what pattern is out here. Here's the reality. If we see the S&P closing above 2985.93, well, then the top is most certainly not in, and we would see price continuing to move higher. That's not the pattern that is in play. We're just moving sideways, which I think is really more of an indication of a top versus a bottom. But that that's, that's my own uh, opinion, and so my opinion doesn't mean jack out here. And I use Jack in a nice way. I could have used a different word out there. But you, and I don't nothing against Jack uh, out here. Just simply, you, you know what I was saying out there. So in the S&P 500, you've got H.M. Gartley's sell pattern. Well, wait, we've got more. Let's do, do this all in two minutes here. Here, if we take a look at the Dow, what do we have? 
You've got a Gertley sell pattern. What did price do? Pulled back to test DB's red line and it's held. You've got to watch the 23,565 level because a close below that says, okay, we're getting ready to rock and roll to the downside. Now, the Dow did not have a breakout level. So that tells us, just like the XLF, that we go all the way back to at least the March low. If we take a look at the NDX 100, it has a Gartley sell pattern. But if price closes um, a bit high, and it has wave number seven out here, uh, but its Gartley sell pattern, depending on where it closes today, is somewhat suspect. But right now, it still is an active Gartley sell. Has price been able to close below Stevie's green line? The answer is no. What's that line level? 88.39 out there that you'd be watching, give or take. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. What do we have inside the Russell? You've got a Gartley sell. Hasn't been able to take out Stevie's red line. Currently priced at 12.34. So you see, it's really trading in between support and resistance, the markets right now, which is this sideways chopping around. What if we take a look at the transports out of the transports? A Gartley sell. See, I don't make this stuff up, but has price taken out Stevie's red line? The answer is no. So the transports aren't giving us any kind of early signal. How about the semis? Having a great day today, up 2%. But guess what? It's just a little bit of a counter trend rally in its Gartley sell pattern, as well as wave number seven out here. And we've got just a few seconds before we go to break. What do we take a look at next? Well, here's the NASDAQ composite, similar to the NDX. It's got wave number seven. It's got a Gartley sell pattern out here. The only one that does, the Wilshire's got a Gartley sell. The New York Stock Exchange got a Gartley sell. Tim, you kind of get the message out there. So you answer it. You answer the question. But how should we interpret the market and what we know about it? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 months. 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to Overland Park, Kansas, and uh, speak with Robert. Robert, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning or this afternoon? I'm great, Steve. Thank you. Are you, are you two hours am, behind us or one hour? Um, one hour different on the central time zone. Okay, great, great. So I know you want to take a look at the uh, TLT and uh, tell us what you're, I think you're, you're are you short the uh, Treasury bonds or tell me what you're doing? No, I, I'm not. It's been kind of dancing around in the consolidation kind of sideways. Yes. And so I was reluctant to take a short position, but now... I'm more interested. In, um, I'd like to go short, but I wanted to check with you first on what's uh, support for like TLT and, and the Treasury. If you could give me both, that'd be great. And, and yeah, your sure. general so, thoughts. So if you take a look at, so just we'll, we'll we'll both we'll look at both. We'll go take a look at the Treasury bonds and then. But to give you your answer inside of TLT. Uh, the first thing that we would do is just simply look to the profiles. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see the daily profile. And this next support area would be 158.62. And that is the center of the box where there's both buyers and sellers. We can see that the center line, which is priced in between the top and the bottom, uh, is really in the center. So there's no, there's nothing here to to uh, give an edge to either buyers or sellers when trading with inside this market profile. Uh, the bottom of that profile would be 150.22, and the uh, top of the weekly profile, which price is trading above, is 159.36. Now, that's what this chart here shows for TLT. If we take a look at, and the TLT, folks, is primarily trading off of the 30-year Treasury bond, not exclusively, but primarily off of the 30-year Treasury bond out here. Here's the consolidation pattern that Robert was talking about. And in this case here, it's really hard for me to suggest to you to take a short, knowing that we're near the bottom of the consolidation. You know, I I'd, I'd, would have rather seen you take a short position if you were uh, when uh, price was up towards the top of that consolidation. Looks like maybe April 22nd. But even then, if you took that short, it really traded sideways up until almost today out there. Right. So the, the, the question is, is this just going to continue to consolidate? I don't know. We don't know. You know, is price going to be able to break through this consolidation? Now, if it did, what it would do, Robert, if it broke through it, you could have a momentum move to the downside. And what that would do is that would give you a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation and probably put you in about the 171-ish type area out there. But right now, um, you know, is it, no, I would say. And then, you know, you've got to factor in here. There's so many other factors. You and I have spoken before about the other factors that are out there, such as uh, what's going on over in Europe and the rush to the U.S. dollar and buying into TLT is an immediate way for somebody to uh, move from euros into uh, U.S. dollars. So that would be one way to do it. Um, you know, you start to see some of the things. I'm sure you read uh, about the Bundesbank um, uh, this or this, this morning, earlier this morning, when the German courts came out and they're trying to, they're positioning themselves against the EU, basically, is the way that I really, if you read the article, you wouldn't get this out of the article. But if you dig through the actual story out there, uh, they're not dealing with anything that's uh, transpired from the coronavirus forward. They're just dealing with all the stuff from 2014 through then. And in essence, what they're really doing, because the EU is trying to put pressure on Germany and the Netherlands to ease up a bit, stop with their fiscal conservative nature. And they're really trying to put the screws to them. Well, what we saw take place today was the high courts in Germany putting the screws back to the EU. 
And what they really were saying was, hey, you've purchased 40% uh, of Italian debt and 30% of this debt from whatever other country, and you need to buy some more of our debt and give us more cash. That's really there. That's what I really see. And the problem is, is that all the chaos that could be going on over there can easily put a bid into bonds easily put a bid into bonds out here. So I just think you've got to be careful. You've just got to be careful out here. But but I, I, I hopefully I've given your answer in that if you're you know you're you're so close to the bottom of that consolidation that now would not really be the time to take the short position. Unless it breaks the consolidation. Unless it breaks a consolidation out there, and then you'd at least have a measured move. I'd say it's just a trade. I know there's a lot of folks that are saying, you know, interest rates are near zero. There's no way. You know, you've got the U.S. Federal Reserve out here. You've got our Federal Reserve that are going to be buying um, bond-related ETFs out here. I mean, they've already communicated. They've already broadcast that to you. I see a lot of people. I've seen a bunch of articles saying they're going to be buying all kinds of ETFs, like the Diamonds, the Spies, the Qs. Well, not yet. And that's not what they communicated. you got to go back and actually read the details. So so now in going short out there, you know, you're, you're going against. Now you're really fighting the Fed, you know? Uh, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is on the TLT, it's 158.62, and what is it on the Treasury? So the on the Treasury, um, let's go see what it's. Uh, give me a second here. We'll try to pull this up for you. We won't try. We will. Just give me a moment to uh, get the uh, tool on the uh, system out here, our TAS boxes. Let's switch over to the 30-year. And uh, in the 30-year, we're going to see that, um, well, you're, you're right now below the center, which is 179 and 330 seconds. So the bottom, uh, so if, so that's interesting, the measured move of a consolidation break probably takes you down to the bottom of the daily profile. And that would be 170 and 18.30 seconds. Okay. So what would it take you to, so really, I'm almost hearing you say what I'm interpreting you to say is you just wouldn't short treasuries. If I were shorting the treasuries, I really had a, so if I had a hankering. High. Well, I, I'll, 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 I'll say it like this. If I had a hankering for shorting treasuries, I would short it via the futures contract. I would not do use TBT, TLT, um, because it, for me, I want to be able to protect my capital. And this right. way... This way, I have, would have stops in place. Look, if you don't use stops, and oh my God, do not trade futures contracts because you can get really crushed out there. Um, so it, 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 that, that would be my, my thinking. As long as you're a trader that's using stops or one cancels the other out there, some type of strategy like that, uh, then trading the actual future contract, you have, you've got better risk management, better capital management out there, and that's what it's all about. My concern is that um, for folks that say that we can't go lower in interest rates, are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you not paying attention to what's been going on around the world out here? So I just think it's a there's going to there's there's already a rush to the U.S. dollar. We're already seeing it out here. All the printing that's going on, people talk, the printing, all the, the oh, our our dollars are being hoarded overseas in Europe. Why? Because there's a real lack of trust over there, a real lack of trust, and there's less lack of trust here. And we're the king when it comes to the currency, king dollar. Tom had it right all along. Thank you. All right, Robert. We good? Yes, thank you. Okay, you bet. Hey, thanks so much for calling. We're going to a break. That was Robert in Overland Park, Kansas. And uh, Dow's up 18, S&P 8. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Steve, I'm great. Thanks for taking the call. I, uh, Steve, I was uh, hoping you could help me with uh, crude oil futures here today. Yes. Uh, Steve, just by way of background, it's worth repeating, I think, at least it is for me, that uh, many brokerages uh, prohibit their customers from trading the June contract, certainly. Yes. Uh, to eliminate the risk of uh, the June contract undergoing the kind of snafu that the May contract went through a couple of weeks back. Yes. And uh, other brokerages are also limiting the trading of July uh, futures. Uh, so, Steve, I, um, I am looking at the July, August, September, and December uh, crude oil futures, and I'm wondering if you've looked at uh, several – of the contracts out the time curve, and if you can um, share with us um, any conclusion that you've come to on which contract you'd be trading uh, from the long side, and uh, if you have, if you could just go through your uh, presentation of uh, what your indicators are saying on that particular contract. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, uh, folks, if you take a look at so that was a great overview, John. I appreciate it. And, uh, folks, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, uh, you can see we have uh, Light Sweet Crude, uh, all the futures contracts right now, not all of them, but all the ones I can put on my system uh, that go from June 2020 all the way out to January 2022. And you can see exactly what they're being traded at, what volumes we have today, the open interest on each of them. And at the bottom of my screen, I've got June, July, August, and uh, September contracts. 
Now, John's asking which contract would I trade to the long side? And for that answer, it would be the June contract. And let me explain why. And then we'll walk through the other three that are on my screen so you can see that. And the reason would be, and that's the very left-hand panel, in the June contract, you can see that yesterday was, first it was a break of a wedge. And the question is, was that a real break or not? And as of 144 in the afternoon, the answer is yes, because the pullback has been to the bottom of that profile. The bottom of that profile is 2299. We're trading at 23.29. And so as long as price holds this level here, and I know, John, from an intraday standpoint, that would be one of the things you'd be looking at. This would say that price should target 27.60. Above that would be just simply a simple descending trend line, another descending trend line up there, maybe 38 or so. Now, on the June contract specifically, if price can break above, close above 27.60, that would offer a price target of 34.50. And 34.50 is the uh, PD, is the TD9 count uh, resistance level out here. Today is going to be bar number five of a TD9 count. And so I'd be looking to see if in fact we have uh, more consecutive closes with each close above the close four bars earlier. I'd be watching that and as, as it gets to bar number eight, nine or the bar following nine, if it's below this 3450, that would be a signal that is probably going to take a rest and that would be the June contract. Now, the reason folks why I answered it that way, which of these contracts would I trade? It's because in the case of the June contract, it is back inside the box, it is above of resistance out here. Whereas when I take a look at the July contract, yes, it broke a descending trend line, but what it hasn't done is it has not gotten back inside its profile. In fact, what it's done so far today, it's rejected the bottom of that box, 2720. However, John, if price were to close above 2720, get back inside that profile, that is a bullish structured profile. And that would say July could move up to, if there was a close above 2885, that's the center of its box out there, that would be signaling a move to the $32 area. If we look at um, the August contract, Q out here, we're going to see that price today ran into resistance. That's 29.30. Now, if price can close above 29.30, the August contract is also a bullish structured profile. And this would say to you and I, if price can close above 30.81, the center of that box, then buyers should be able to push price up to 33.82. If we go over to the September contract out here, uh, yesterday was looks like a slight false break above resistance, the top of that box, which is 28.98, and with price below that right now. So that's the reason why I went to the June contract from a trading standpoint. Now, if I go back to June out here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look actually at the hourly time frame chart for you. And on the hourly time frame, what this did earlier this morning was it generated a Gartley buy pattern. So it had a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It's kind of hard to see, but the high that was formed out here at 2,000 hours, this was on May the 5th. Yeah, May the 5th, 2,000 hours. That was the top followed up by a little bear sash candle. That created an A to B equals CD to the downside. We didn't know where that was going to stop, but we knew on an hourly basis that 2234 was the breakout level. And price was unable to get below that. And then we saw the bullish piercing candle that formed at 10 o'clock this morning. And that confirmed this little Gartley buy pattern. Now, what price has been unable to do is it's just consolidating with inside its Here's the catch. It's bearish structured profile for the 60 minute time frame out here. But if price can close, as long as this profile remains in effect, John, if price can close above 2468, this is telling you that, okay, what we looked at on the daily time frame, it's ready to take off and continue to move higher out there. But so far in the short term time frame, uh, all levels of support have held. So that's what I see. But let me throw it back out to you. After sharing that information with you, what other questions? would you have or what else can I look at for you? Uh, Steve, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, here's uh, what you can do for me. Yeah. Um, I am trading August, September, and December futures. Uh, of course, not all at the moment, but I'm using those three particular contracts. My rationale is uh, I can envision a situation where uh, supply sometime, well, sometime in the next, you know, six months, yes. that supply uh, produced here in the U.S. starts to fall dramatically just as a result of many companies either bankrupted or uh, uh, 
cutting back on uh, uh, drilling operations, combined with a uh, a, uh, a recovery in, in transportation demand, whether it's cars or jets or a combination of the of the two. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, uh, looking for and trying to profit from such an occurrence, if it occurs, of course, and I'll be using those three contracts, August, September, December. And just as you do your work uh, and presentations on the show in the upcoming days and weeks, if there's something that jumps off the page on, on those, uh, I'd sure be much obliged if you just share that with the audience. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'll give you this one thing right now. So I, I, I put over the uh, December contract, folks, uh, since that's one that John is taking a look at here. And you can see here that you can see a nice little rising trend line, this little green line. We can see that price was able to close above a descending trend line. Uh, what price did was it tagged the bottom of that profile. So that would be where a counter trend rally would typically end out here. We can see that today price is pulled back. So 32.16 is going to be your key level out there. And if price can get above this, this is a bullish structured profile. This is suggesting a run up to 35.59. Even though it doesn't show on this chart, my other chart, John, would say that the breakdown level on the December contract is 36.73. So your upside target resistance zone would be between 35.59 and 36.73 from a daily standpoint for the December contract. Okay. Good man. Thanks so much. You bet. Thanks for calling. Good to hear from you. That was John in Philly. We get back from this break. I believe we're going out to Buffalo, Michigan. Speaking with Gary. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to uh, Gary in Michigan. Gary, thanks for holding. Thanks for calling. How are you today? Hey, Steve. Uh, uh, nice to talk to you. I'm enjoying your show. I'm a recent subscriber, um, uh, and I'm from Buffalo, Michigan, the other side of the state, and a fellow Michigander. It. But I'm, yes. a, I'm not a trader. I'm just uh, invest a little bit of family money. I'm big on gold and, um, and silver, um, and I've been in some I'm in some gold and silver stocks for the family, and okay. then uh, I've got some IWM puts. Um, did call the market turn right, but I didn't find you in time to uh, understand it was turning back. So um, gave most of that idea to be on money back. But I'm looking for the gold. Is, if that breaks, you were right last week. It didn't break above that 1,700 figure that you had. Now yes. it's retracing. How bad is the retracement going to be? You know, it's a great question. It's um, If we just simply take a look at this chart here, Gary, this is showing you gold priced in all the major currencies, meaning the dollar, euro, yen, and pound sterling. And we like to understand, um, you know, how is, gold how, is it, how is gold trading on other people's desks around the globe? And so right now, even though price is below support, which is 17, 1706, basically, don't pay attention to the number on this screen out here because I'm using my synthetic version of the contract. What we also have is we've got a series of lower highs and higher lows. So it's really in a wedgie at this stage. Um, and uh, now it's trading, it's broken through swing points priced in yen, but it hasn't broken through swing points priced in euros and priced in, priced in pounds sterling. To answer your question though, if gold did, where, where could gold find support? If it breaks through this level and continues to move lower, my answer would be 1595.20. 1595.20 is where gold last broke out from, using the TD9 count top. Bar number eight is the high of the uh, price during this uh, time period here, and that's a topping signal. And that's suggesting that we should prepare for gold to pull back to that 1595 level. And, and Gary, my apology, but we are at the end of the show. I know. So, um, so my apology for that. But um, uh, please call back again. We'd love to uh, speak to you and send me an email, and I'll send you anything else it is that you need for what, what it is that you're holding in your portfolio. All right, my friend? Thanks, Steve. You're a treat. Bye -bye. You bet. Thanks, Everybody have a great day and stay tuned for two more great hours. And I'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Have a great Wednesday, folks.